Akira. It's the show that brings your favorite crazies in the spring football scene together. It is Around the UFL. Welcome, everybody, into our latest edition of Around the UFL. Zach Kyleman in the hosting chair this week, getting even crazier with the merch, as always. And I got my full slew of good friends alongside me with the PFN group. Guys, welcome aboard for our third iteration of the show. It's going to be a big one, by the way. Stay tuned. We're going to have head coach John DeFilippo of the Memphis Showboats along with us for the ride. You do not want to miss that. Get your questions ready in the chat below and tell your friends we need people jumping on here because coach wants to hear from you. Before we get into any discussion that pre leads, which we got a lot of news to talk about today, as we do, we got to go around the horn. I'm going to go clockwise today and lead off with my fellow uh, good Panthers fan here, Jake Ball, next to me, Panther Shadow, as we go online. Good sir, how are you doing? Uh, we had a surprise uh, re signing, it sounds like, come across the desk for us that uh, I'm very hyped about, and I know you are maybe even more so. Uh, no, no, no. That was just the mock up. I'm waiting for it to be official. Uh, all indications. And I got hyped up. <laughs> uh, yeah, that it should be official. Uh, I thought I put in the chat, you know, just waiting for him to be resigned. So, uh, so you're all there, Zach, a little, you know, but I'm just excited for that to happen. So hopefully it does soon. Hopefully it drops, you know, the PR drops it, uh, tweets it tonight. That'd be nice. But, uh, as far as official, no. I'm it manifesting it very much so. I want this so bad that I have to make it go where it sounds like it's real anyway leading Manifest into it. man i'm hey i'm gonna keep doing it i'm gonna keep doing it we gotta keep on rolling along though i gotta get these other other guys i could talk to jake all day about panthers talk while we have have it and we'll have plenty during the season but next up i got someone that i talk to all the time on a different show ufl podcast fridays at 9 a.m eastern it is the ref himself with a uh, shaved uh face and a uh, probably sadder demeanor sadly from the weekend i hope you're holding up well <laughs> It's me, Mario. Yeah, you know, I had to do something because after that loss last night, you guys, I I told you I'd get a little bit of energy once we went live, but you saw, you know, no curtain style. I was beaten down, broken down, battered, all sorts of bad. And uh, But the one good thing is I could finally shave, and as I told everybody, I 
couldn't change anything until the lions lost because had I shaved and then they lost my head would roll, uh, on myself. So yeah, sad, sad in its own way, but it feels good. And the mustache is so funny. Like I said, when I was shaving and I saw what a glimpse of what it could look like, I said, well, I'm leaving that at least for a couple days because it's, it's so comical. I can't wait to go to work meetings tomorrow because they thought the beard was bad, but the mustache, <laughs> oh yeah. boy. And, and just think that started on our show. I told you behind the scenes, keep the beer and you did as long as you could. So it's amazing how far you've come from one Lions fan to another who was at Ford field just the other night, yesterday, as we are speaking, it is Mel's Mel's. How are you holding up dear? Um, it was really sad. I had a little bit of a crying moment at Ford field yesterday with all the other lions fans, but it, Hey, we have Michigan Panthers coming up in about two months so i will have i'm sure happy tears of joy in two months when i get to see the panthers on the field the prayer circle will be starting very soon i guarantee it <laughs> trust me you me jake will all be talking about this and uh manifesting another championship bound run this time going the extra step as we continue onward of course our resident insider the man who breaks all the news it seems it is james larson another resident michigander by the way <laughs> these days how are you doing good sir well i do want to point out that i'm a vikings fan so suck it up guys that's that's really that's really a shame that you guys are knocked out. I'm just I'm just so depressed that the Lions are at the playoffs. Um, they're, they're doing no well. Uh, this, doing man. great actually. Uh, <laughs> moving on to Luke. Yes, please. Yes, our uh, as we dubbed after the last show, it is PFN's UFL Jesus. It is Luke Miller. <laughs> Luke, how are you feeling, my guy? We like I said, we talked about this after the show, and I think uh, I don't know. It's just give the aura of bringing good tidings of spring football. Oh, you're muted. I love a well, good technical difficulty. Just kidding. Something's beyond. <laughs> I, I was just uh, seeing if you all were paying attention. Um, so, uh, like James, I'm also a Vikings fan. And uh, so I oh also God. shed a happy tear last night that uh, the Lions streak without a Super Bowl is still alive because they dang sure didn't deserve one before us. So, <laughs> sorry to the, to the Lions people in the, in the, in the room here, but um you know there's always next year right you know stallions aren't going back to back to back after that i'm just going to tell you you just put some bad juju on your team <laughs> after that nonsense the uh, tension is surprisingly palpable in here <laughs> yeah the the nfc north chat um you know i don't know maybe we'll all be happy when we can leave that behind us because frankly it's not really good news for any of us these days but <laughs> That is true. That, but that's why we watch the UFL. True. This yes. is what keeps me happy, sort of, kind of. We are we are one step closer to uh, us crazies, as we call it, or Seth Lessons' favorite ta term, getting UFL football, another spring season, three straight in a row of some nature, one way or another. Let's kick things off into our UFL news discussion. James, I'm going to start with you on this because we have uh, some pieces to revisit and also some surprising transactions that happened this week. Let's uh, turn back the clock about a week now. We had a, a trade that hit the wire that had a few people raise some eyebrows and is the first of the league's official trades now that they are merged between the two entities. Yeah, like you said, it's the first one. And what I think was, was super cool about it is that it was an XFL team trading to a USFL team. You know, this is something that we not only are we seeing the two teams that are going to play each other, but now we're seeing trades between XFL and USFL teams. So it's groundbreaking for spring football. But yeah, as you mentioned, Bubba Bolden was traded from the San Antonio Brahmas to the Birmingham Stallions. The Stallions shipped over Elijah Holder. And Elijah's a guy that, that, that Birmingham went and picked up during one of the drafts. He's a guy that I really thought would have been a big part of their secondary this year. He's had a couple nice seasons. He's with the Houston Gamblers in 2022. And then this past season, he played in the XFL with the Sea Dragons. Had, had solid seasons both years. Um, and Bubba Bolden, that's a guy that was actually drafted by the Brahmas over a year ago before the 2023 season. Didn't end up playing because of some NFL opportunities. Then he ended up signing a letter of intent this, uh, this past fall, give or take. And now he's in Birmingham. So a couple of really Damn. good young defensive backs that I think it's a pretty even trade. Luke, I'd love to get your thoughts on that since you're the Stallions guy here and what you think this means for not just the Stallions, but also the Brahmas. James, you read my mind. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it's it's interesting because, uh, you know, 
there was so many, and you know, we'll probably get the chance to, to talk with Coach D. Filippo about this when he comes on. But there were so many different steps to building a roster with the league merger, right? Like you had to protect players, then you had that dispersal draft, then you had the super draft, and you know, because of all those different stages, I'm sure for multiple teams there was, you know, either there wasn't an opportunity maybe to get a guy that they really wanted, or maybe they did have an opportunity, but, but that guy wasn't, you know, they they chose to go with some other guys, and then that guy was off the board or whatever the case may be. So I thought it was just interesting to see, you know, Bubba Bolden was a guy that the Brahmas protected, which would seem to indicate that somebody that they had a lot of, you know, thought had a lot of potential and wanted to be a part of their roster. But then for the Stallions, you know, Holder, that was a guy that they drafted, you know, not super, super early, but I think he was like, first five rounds they drafted him in the in the super draft and the Brahmas could have taken him you know but apparently they had some other guys that were sort of higher on their board but you know in the in the grand scheme of things right like even though they protected Bolden and they weren't able to draft Holder for whatever reason for the Brahmas they felt like Holder was more valuable and so they were that's a trade that they were willing to make whereas on the Stallions end right like they picked up Holder who obviously they they liked because they drafted him but they must have been more interested in Bolden, who they never had the opportunity to pick up because he he was protected. So I think it's just uh, it's kind of a fascinating little snapshot of all of the different facets that have gone into building these rosters. And, you know, I, I liked the trade, at least on the Stallions end. I think, you know, Holder is a great player, but he's a guy that it's kind of a little bit of a known entity. We kind of know what he can do, and he certainly can do some good things. But I think the Stallions have a lot of safeties. And Bolden is one of those guys where I think he has a really high ceiling. And maybe it doesn't work out, but, you know, we haven't seen what he can do in one of these spring leagues, and he could kind of emerge as one of the best safeties, I think, in the league potentially. So I think for the Stallions, it's sort of a, you know, do you kind of take the guy that you know what he can do that that's probably going to be a solid player, or do you kind of maybe take a risk on a younger guy that we haven't seen in the league yet? And I, I like the Stallions kind of, you know, taking the the risk there. Um, and again, obviously, I think the Brahmas certainly got a good player too. So it's a, a, a neat thing to see unfold here early on in the sort of, uh, you know, beginning stages of the 2024 season absolutely is i'm going to open up the rest of the panel to this and kind of lead into our other major i think newswire transaction that came up this week because it's funny um and you know i'll throw this to the panel but i know this is more of a ref centric question the uh roughnecks are kind of in the news for two big moves not just this trade but a qb discussion as well well a qb discussion i you, you really had to st- Put it in and twist it. You know, my man, Superstar Bahar, sadly, is no longer with us. But the dilemma that's in front of us, I mean, is an interesting dilemma to have uh, because, you know, we have Reed Sinet on the team. But the name that I, I'm surprised nobody is talking about here, Nolan Henderson. Nolan Henderson, I mean, I watched some of this dude's highlight tapes. And whoever, shout out to whoever it is that made his highlight tapes because there's... <laughs> If anybody's watched them, there's like some, the music's like balling in there. They're having some fun with it, but Kenji's out. Nolan's in, we have Reed Sinet. It'll be interesting to see how it shakes out, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt if Nolan Henderson is who we have behind the rock come the beginning of the season here. Uh, but you know, Reed Sinet's a, an interesting person to have on, on backup. We talked about this on the UFL podcast last week. I'm just kind of shocked that they they walked away from Kenji after protecting him. To me, that was the biggest thing. They 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 secured him and then still let him go after the fact. Uh, but maybe it's something they saw in the competition there. You know, that we talked about this going into I think every episode that we've had. And we're only on episode three, but competition is tough, and we're only at the first round of it. Training camp is less than thirty days away. And then we're going to see a whole nother round of cuts that are going to be super surprising. And so, you know, at least there's some time to maybe make it on another team. But if there's any, if there's any position that's the most toughest competition in this league, it's the QB. So it's, it's going to be tough. We can only hope that, you know, this is the case for why hopefully maybe not next year, but in the upcoming years, have it, this sticks around that we see some more teams because we're seeing eight teams worth of talent, you know, not making the cut. And uh, unfortunately, the superstar will not be balling out for us this year. But hey, you know what? I'll throw this out there. And this is not something I hope for. But let's say, you know, a couple weeks go in, things aren't working out. Uh, You know what? This guy already knows your whole scheme, all of that. He played under Coach Johnson last year. 
wouldn't wouldn't doubt to see him get a call back if things aren't working to plan. Um, but how does that know, fit the twelve and zero narrative? Well, I was about to say we already know that that's not going to work because we're going twelve and zero. But there could be a situation. Let's say we win our first three games by like one point. You know, might be good. We well, want to win by like twenty plus each of these games, just to let you know. Another scenario too is training camp is going to be a few weeks long, and you never mm-hmm. know. Like a couple of these guys might be underperforming in training camp, and we could see some familiar names jump back in. I do think the Houston quarterback situation is really interesting because we see general manager Lionel Vital kind of making his case here of let's bring in a whole new quarterback room. You know, Montel mm-hmm. Cozart, he's gone. Terry Wilson, he's gone. Now Kenji Bahar is gone. They have three brand new faces, three guys that really haven't proven themselves in the spring football scene at all, other than Reed Sinet, who played a little bit for the Brahmas before his season ending injury. But I think it's going to be really intriguing to watch this unfold in training camp here. Yep. And that's the beauty of spring ba- ball. Is Kenji Bahar still a superstar? Of course. Hell yeah. Once a superstar, always a superstar. Just like Mel Farr. <laughs> None of you know. Maybe Mel's, maybe he knows Mel Farr. No, he's a superstar. He sells cars in Detroit. Used to. Oh. He's not around anymore. I'm not that old. <laughs> oh, come on. All right. All right. <laughs> Phil, speak, this is a, this is a great segue here honestly speaking of which and mel's i only i'm gonna ask this first before we really dive in so you're at this watch party at ford field massive packed setup i mean the mm-hmm. social posts i mean it was an insane crowd that they showed it really out there was, yeah um so the feed there they're showing for the game are they showing the ufl promos during this feed on the jumbotrons too you know uh if i had seen it i would have recorded it and i would have posted it but i did okay. not see any ufl promos at all just standard commercial broadcasting and it was kind of interesting halftime they did not show the halftime show at um uh, in san francisco at all they turned it off and put on a low like the local uh news broadcast instead so um i i don't know if it was just somebody like put on like their comcast cable stream of it (laughs) i have no idea but um but there were no promos at all which i did think was kind of weird since the panthers are coming to play at Ford Field. It would have been, a, I think, a great opportunity um, for the Panthers to really capitalize on. I mean, there was what 35,000, 40,000 people there yeah. to to um, to show that to showcase the Panthers too. So, well, the good news is is that it, I don't know if any else uh, any of you else saw this, but Fox PR released that there was like over fifty six million viewers for the game yesterday. And that's 56 million people that saw UFL as throughout the entire game. So that's big time. That's really, really and one thing. UFL. One thing that I thought was really interesting and cool that they did is they marketed. Um, they had like specific team adverts. You know, they had the Stallions. You know, they had these commercials mm-hmm. for specific teams that they put in markets, which I thought, I thought that was a great idea. I really love that. And I'm just Int- happy to see it. Interestingly that. enough though, Houston didn't get one of those. At least maybe I live far enough away. Maybe I'm like in the outskirts, but I got just the generic team ones. Mm-hmm. So I was sad. Cause I saw once I started seeing, cause I think uh, our good friends at vintage varsity uh, sponsoring spring stock three coming up in less than nine weeks. Uh, he had posted the showboats one. And then I think Luke, mm-hmm. you had compiled a whole bunch of them, mm-hmm. but yeah, no Houston one. And that, I don't know. We're not going to speculate, but it gets yeah. me a little antsy. <laughs> I wanted to see my roughnecks on the TV. I had a couple people that live in Houston tell me they never saw anything. So I, I don't, I don't think there was one. Yeah. Yeah. We saw, the, I saw awesome. regular UFL promos. Now I'll tell you this, sure. you were James, you brought up the number of people that saw the promo. I can attest that there's definitely interest there because as the dagger of defeat was twisting into my heart from that Lions loss, Pro Football Newsroom, pfnewsroom.com goes down from the influx of traffic from all the promos from throughout the game. Not the time that I really wanted to be dealing with support and the website going down, but I guess, you know what, it helped helped me take the loss a little bit better i had something else to think about although i didn't uh, i was defeated i'm defeated right now uh but that to case in point there is interest there you know if there's an we get a boatload of traffic as it stands so if there was that much to knock the site down 
I'll take that as a good sign, right? I can only imagine yeah. what their website saw. I would love to see, and Jake, maybe this is a you question, maybe not today, but in the future, the social uptick. Like, did we see a, a good bump in social activity as far as followers and things like that? D don't expect an answer today, but I know you always have the charts and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I haven't checked yet. My guess is that everybody's still going down. Uh, for a reason, this off season, especially on Twitter, their follower counts goes down for, for quite a bit. So we'll see if training camp goes up. I'll probably watch around that, especially. Yeah. Once, uh, we start seeing more promos, you know, you know, this episode is very, uh, I Detroit centric one way or another. We're talking of course, a lot of stuff about the television, the lions, by the way, that 56 million, that's the largest NFC championship game broadcast on Fox in 12 years. So massive crowd largest market by the way that watched was uh detroit no surprise to me but you know something to keep in mind for any of those that got the local ticket promos that probably was a nice touch onto it as much as you can get for people there and uh for the said panthers in particular jake uh we got some changes that have been uh possibly rumbling behind the scenes that seem to be coming to fruition as of now on the coaching staff yeah, as James and I tweeted out, we got a uh, brand new coordinators among a couple other position coaches, but that hasn't been confirmed or coming out yet. But for what we got out today, yeah, new OC, new DC, well, new DC, but familiar face in uh, defensive line coach Colin Bauer. He obviously did a fantastic job last year with the D line, uh, as Michigan Panthers dude pointed out, 18 sacks for the D line across um, for the Panthers last year. So fantastic job well-deserved there, but the, the new name, the big surprise, I think, um, maybe, maybe not a big surprise with how our deep, our offense had been over the last couple of years. First year, you know, 2022, actually, I think statistically better, did better than last year's offense. So, mm. uh, sad to say we, we lost, uh, offensive coordinator, Eric Marty. Um, and we picked up the wide receiver coach for the stars. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Belfay. Belfay. All right. Yeah. So Marcel, Marcel Belfay. Belfay. Marcel Belfay. Who, if anybody pays attention to the CFL, should be a familiar name. Uh, even if you watched the UFL a decade ago, he, he would be a familiar name to you. He was coaching the Stars wide receivers the last couple of years. Makes a hell of a lot of sense now that we got all of the Stars offensive players except for Cookus. So they've always they've been a good unit the last couple of years. So I'm excited to see what uh, what Belfay brings. Yeah, I do sure. wonder. I do wonder what comes up next. Is uh, look, I'm, I'm we got a lot of Panthers people people on here, of course. But I mean, I do think the grand question towards the end of the year, once EJ Perry came in, was you know, was it the scheme or is it the personnel? And uh, now we're gonna have to see a little bit extra of that being implemented this year with the with the changes at OC. Eric Marty has been uh, dedicated to the Panthers the last two years, and you know has been a hell of a supporting actor on that assistant coaching side, but uh. Times are changing for us uh, resident Michiganders and Panthers fans out there by the Detroit Metro. Should be fascinating to see what changes. Perry's a talented guy. Danny Etling is QB. It's going to be interesting what happens out that way. Well, on cue, Zach, I got to plug this because I do an article dropping tomorrow on their quarterback situation. So make sure you guys are going wow. to pfmakers.com for that bright and early tomorrow. I'm reading your mind. Man. <laughs> in your, I'm in your head. Self I'm excited. Chat. <laughs> I'm excited for the change, though. I but at the same time, I kind of wish that we'd had a little bit more consistency uh, with some staff. We have not had, you know, a majority of staff retained from year over to year. So, you know, new OC. Luckily, we have a you know second year head coach. So hopefully, there's some consistency there. But yeah, I really, really, really hope that you know the new the turnover isn't going to be a detriment again. Well, I think I it's interesting down that they brought in Marcel Belfay as well because. Like you said, they picked up so many stars throughout the draft. Corey Coleman, Devin Gray, Jordan Sewell, Terry Wright, all, basically every single wide receiver outside of DeAndre Overton and Cyril Grayson. And they also picked up Matt Colburn. That's a big addition to the running back room because Reggie Corbin's gone, and it does not look like he's coming back. From everything I've heard, from everything Jake's heard, it's unlikely that he's in – it's unlikely not only that he'd be in Michigan, but that he'll be in the league in general uh, this upcoming season. So – yeah, that's an interesting development in and of itself. But I, I think Marcel will definitely bring a new new energy to the room. Yeah, like Zach said, we'll have to see who, who the quarterback is. Mm -hmm. 
I was going to say, I did go down a rabbit hole today because I was looking up Marcel after you all broke the news, and apparently he's also the head coach of the Ottawa GGs, which is a college team in Canada. Um, And I just feel like we need to recognize the fact that there is a team in Canada named the Ottawa GGs, (laughs) G-E-E hyphen G-E-E-S. And also, I just want to say, shout out Eric Marty, because like baller move, once he, I guess, was let go or whatever, he just posts 80 minutes of highlights of Josh Love on Twitter. And I'm just like, if I ever get, you know, let go from a job, that's how I want to go out. Just like, hey, see y'all later. Here's 80 minutes of my dude's highlights. <laughs> you could say you're showing say, all the love there. I just True. have to say, half of those views of that 80 minute highlight was, was me. It was me. Just in case anyone was wondering, are you just like, are you just like any day scrolling through and go, you know what? One more time for good old, for good old times. Just we're reliving it. We're just gonna relive it all. Ah, memories of a gr- of a great season's past, <laughs> and the love we once had. <laughs> Literally, I mean the pun fully, as you guys understand. I always take puns seriously. There are no, there are no pun, no pun intended when I am on the hosting chair. Uh, I think it is about that time for our special guests to possibly be creeping on. Should be coming here. up soon. Should be yeah. coming up soon. Did we even mention who the ho- who the guest is this week? I don't. I'll, I think I'll, we I'll did, reiterate maybe. it if some of you are joining late because we have we have some stragglers that come in late. And if you haven't seen our social and aren't following, again, we are uh, we're being we're going to be pleased to be joined momentarily by head coach of the Memphis Showboats, John D. Filippo, today. Uh, going to be one heck of an interview and actually, uh, you know what producer behind the scenes, let's bring him on in. I think this is a good time. Well, we, we got to gotta give, you know, fashionably late is the way to go. So we, we still have, we still have a little bit of runway until Mr. Mr. Flip shows up. Um, but, uh, like I said, I'm excited to have him on the show. I mean, back to back, we've having all-star stellar guests. Um, yeah, you know what, actually, maybe he is here. Let's bring him in real quick. <laughs> uh, ducky wasn't prepared for me to bring Bruh, him in yeah. here i'll just remove him then <laughs> anyway we'll get rid of him now um so w- w- one thing that we didn't talk about we- we'll probably do this after flip comes on uh we also have our first ufl community showcase which i'm actually super excited now we could talk a little bit about it, and like I said, once Flip comes, we'll we'll bring him in and we'll uh, we'll sw- uh, swap around. But so, who has all seen this PowerPoint pe- presentation? I guess by hand. Does anybody? All right. So okay, half of us. Oh, so okay, a majority have seen it. Uh, I'm super excited. I've only seen a couple glances of it. Mel's, you're going to take us through it. I feel like it's only natural. People say that we don't give you enough airtime. What do you feel about that? Oh, I mean, there's six of us on here. You know, there's a lot of topics to go through. Some people know more than others on certain things. So I think everybody has their time and their place on the show. I don't think that anyone necessarily gets more time than others, you know. But but I am very excited to go over this this um, slideshow that, that a member of our community put together. I think it's really cute. And I think it definitely helps serve a serve a certain type of purpose within the community so you know i joked about this a long time ago but i'm gonna say it live on the air because that makes it even funnier i have a, a, an idea for a future segment and that segment is win a date with mel's are you gonna let us do that are you gonna let us like put you out there maybe at summer stock win a date with mel's i don't know i it depends on how much we're paying we can see we can find out <laughs> Well, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you got to keep coming back and watching all of the shows to find out if this is going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah. Randomly, at a random point in one show, we'll announce whether it's going to be a thing or not. So everyone has to watch every minute of every show. Stay tuned. Yeah. And even if, in you know what, you may have missed it. So you should go back and watch the first two episodes. Maybe we did announce it. Tricks on you. It might be there. Man. Well, I, while we wait for uh, Flip to come on in, uh, a transaction or a couple of transactions that I thought was interesting is mm-hmm. special teams related. I know our guy, Nosebuzz, is going to love this one. 
And that's the fact that St. Louis opted not to pick up anybody in either dispersal draft. They passed on Luis Aguilar. They passed on Matthew Coughlin. They, they passed on Cole Murphy, who was available for a little while from the Panthers. And this past week or so, they picked up two guys, Andre Smith and Andrew Mevis. And those are two guys that, in my opinion, you know, they have potential, but they haven't proved themselves professionally yet. So those are two kickers now they are going to come into this training camp here. And I'd love to get some of the thoughts from anyone else here. What do you guys think we're going to see from specialists this year? Because we have a lot of teams that have two kickers or two punters. You know, we have Memphis is a great example of that, where they have Alex Kessman and uh, Matt Coughlin on the squad right now. It's going to be interesting to watch this all unfold. Yeah, well, I think one of the things I love about spring football is the specialist position. I mean, case in point, look at look at who the all-star from the USFL in the NFL was this year. It was a kicker from the Stallions. I know, Luke, I, I'll beat you to the punch before you gloat on it. Uh, and so I fully expect to see some good kicking in this league. But to your point, the competition is going to be a tough. And we might, I wouldn't even doubt if we see some more... Some of these guys that are in positions now maybe drop out and some other guys come in that aren't signed right now because there is that level of competition out there. Um, as for St. Louis, like you said, uh, probably a little bit hard to judge compared to some of the other guys that have been out there a little bit longer, but that's the beauty of the game, right? I don't know. Luke, what are you thinking? Because you lost your guy. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting some of the different approach from different teams, as James alluded to. You know, you got some teams that uh, have brought in, you know, two kickers, two punters, and they're going to let guys compete for that spot in camp. And then you've got other teams like the Stallions who did have to replace their kicker because obviously Brandon Aubrey has secured himself probably a long career in the NFL. And so they brought in a new kicker, um, Chris Blewett, but that was it, right? Like they got the guy they wanted and there's lots of other really good kickers out there still available that they could have brought in to compete with him. Um, but you know, for whatever reason they liked that they saw him blew it. Uh, I mean, I think for a good reason, I mean, he's, he's a fantastic kicker has a huge leg. So, um, oh, I, I think it's a great, a great move, but it is interesting just to see some of the different approach of some teams who want to save that roster spot to say, well, we want another quarterback. We want another lineman or whatever the case may be versus teams that say, Hey, you know, we got expanded training camp rosters for once, 75 guys. Like, let's take advantage of the opportunity and bring a couple kickers, a couple punters in and let them sort of come duke it out for who's going to be the best and who's going to earn that spot. And I like, I think like all the positions, right? Like now that we're going from 16 to eight teams, only the best will survive. Right. And unfortunately that means some guys are going to be out of work, but the good news is, is that we're going to, you know, really hopefully see some excellent specialist play you know, along with quarterback play and other other positions uh, as well as we go into the season. But, you know, if you remember the USFL in 2022 at the beginning of the year, that was a big complaint. Um, the kickers were really struggling. You know, supposedly it was the the chips in the ball. That very well may have been the case. But I'm, I'm excited to see the quality of specialist play going to this league because I think it'll be really strong given the fact that guys are going to be competing in camp. And we've got a lot of guys with a lot of experience at this point and all those kinds of factors. Got to credit that the league is deep at specialist positions anyway. We already talk about combining the best of the best of the best anyhow. You know, something that's fascinating with, like, the transactional periods right now we're going through is, you know, and it's throwing me for a loop. I understand kind of why we're dealing with this, but the letters of intent signings that are coming in and have been pointed out, I really have to be, and I imagine James and everyone else in here is the same way, where we have to be extra, extra combing through of every PR that has a transaction for free agent signing because some of them, you know, with the letters of intent, the XFL guys signed, or maybe some people that just joined in, you know, you still have to go through that process. And I keep getting, I keep forgetting that step has to take place because I just am like, oh, good, this person's here. But then you go and realize, oh, wait a minute, you actually have to sign a contract. Max Roberts, for example, was one. You know, if we're talking, show, we're going to talk about showboats anyway, you know. So it's a guy that comes up, signed a letter of intent, was originally with Vegas, and uh, you know, I went that threw me for a loop. But I'm like, oh yes, that's right. He never, it wasn't really a signing he was under. You know, he intends to. He still has to put the pen to paper on the actual physical contract. And now we're seeing that those phases are kind of getting completed at this moment in time, along with everything else. Well, the interesting thing with the, with this whole process of seeing guys continuing to sign letters of intent is the fact that they still haven't fully finalize all the contract information from what I understand. So we should be getting some details on that soon where we're going to see these players 
all signing official contracts, you know, ahead of training camp. But as far as I know, there's still some negotiations going on on that end, which is why we're seeing them do this process the way they are. Yeah. Right on. So, you know, while we're, we may have, uh, we may have to move a couple things around, but Hey, that's the beauty of doing things live. Anything can happen, but you know what? I'll tell you anything means U F L community showcase. Damn right. And I, First, really quick, I wanna I wanted to bring up, you know. Oh, please, sorry. Um, Chad Ochocinco, you know, he's yeah. uh he's made some comments about maybe having some interest in playing, and at forty six years old, and uh, I think um, I kind of want to see him come out and play if he's serious at all. See, this know. is that where Flip is at right flip, now. Yeah. He, they're, they're, yeah, no, they're, they're, single. Right. they're probably smoking his cigars right now talking contracts good point <laughs> letter of intent ocho cinco there i'm holding off on the, uh, discussing any ocho cinco discussion he's like I made my case is the ref knows i have very much made my point last week about that and i will uh i will refrain from adding on to what is already my clear point on the said debate on this but that guy, I, mean, I yeah. absolutely loved Ocho Cinco when he was at the Bengals, and then he had his stint in the CFL. I mean, I just, I thought he was a character, and I absolutely loved it on the field. So, I mean, there's no denying that it'll bring some interest to the league. I just don't know how long the interest would be. And I mean, even case in point, when we look at, because he was supposed to be at the XFL Showcase in 2020, uh, during that time, I think he was trying out as a kicker. So even if we see yeah. him in this league, it, I mean we don't even know what position he is going to be but i do have good news i i think i've gotten word from our our backstage agent that our that our special guest is near um so hopefully soon folks stay tuned and here's the thing go let everybody know that the show is on we're live we'll take this moment everybody look below the video make sure you're subscribed click the bell hey, bill to rest and click like and then here's our guest. See, if you do all those things, look at how fast the guest showed up. <laughs> he is here, the man himself, John D. Filippo, head coach of the Memphis Showboats. John, how are you doing today? Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. I, I really appreciate it. Sorry for the couple minute delay. We have uh, a, a possible developing uh, story Not, in a good way. So I was on the phone. Ooh. I apologize for your. <laughs> all so good, John. I'll totally it, understand. We appreciate you joining us. And, hey, this is spring football in action, and it's a constant whirlwind for you guys. And I'd love, you know, the first question I have for you here is, I'd assume that these last few months have been pretty crazy for you with, you know, planning for the New Orleans yeah. Breakers season, and then all of a sudden, you know, we find out the Breakers aren't a part of the new league, and then the Memphis Showboats come around and you get picked up as their head coach. What, what have these last few months been like for you? It's it's been uh, It's been a whirlwind, to say the least. And And the most impressive thing is, the amount of people, both players and coaches, that want to be a part of what we're doing is, is really, really cool. And, and you know, it was really tough to hear those words that the New Orleans Breakers were no longer. Um, it was one of my fun, most fun years of coaching, coaching those guys. Uh, talk about passion, energy, and swagger, which we talk about in our organization. Those guys defined it. And they defined passion. They love football. They defined energy, the way they practice. They defined some swagger. I mean, we were the team that brought the boombox out the, for pregame warm-ups last year. Yes. Didn't bother me one bit, man. If that's how we roll, that's how we roll. And 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 um, I let those guys. I like to let their personality show. And I, that's you know, incur, I encourage that. And because I think you play better when you when you're just yourself. You're not trying to be this robot and you know fit into some puzzle. You're yourself, and, and you fly around and you make plays. And I think that's a huge a huge piece of of what we're trying to create, in Memphis. Absolutely. And speaking of what you're creating here in Memphis, it's been not only has it been busy the last few months, but this last month, especially, you know, we've had two drafts. We have free agency opening up. What's it been like for you? And you have a brand new general manager and Dennis Pollian. What has this process been like of just acquiring talent and getting the showboats ready to go for 2024? A lot of film study. I can tell you that a lot. And, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to our coaching staff. Um, they did an unbelievable job. You know, Dennis Pullian is a guy I've known for a long time. Um, I've known him since I was in college. And so I've known Dennis a, a really long time. He did a great job of organizing a lot of names and, or, and organized it in a way that the coaches weren't evaluating a 1,000 players in their position because there were a lot of players available. 
And so we organized it in a certain way. Not going to say how exactly we did it, but uh, we made it manageable for everybody. And we wanted to draft the best players. And, you know, the proudest thing I was as many breakers players as we drafted, we were one of the few teams that actually got called cross party lines. Okay. We drafted a good amount of players from the XFL as well. And so we were, you know, obviously wanted players we were familiar with at certain spots and certain players. But at the same time, like, we wanted the best player available. And I give a lot of credit to our coaching staff for watching that map take. Absolutely. And I, we got a full full panelist table here. I know, Luke, you have a question for, for John here? Yeah, Coach. Um, so I'm actually coming to you from Birmingham. And uh, I know you were in the city last year, obviously, yeah. with the New Orleans Breakers. But my wife is from Memphis, so that's sort of a second home for us. We spend a lot of time there. Her family's also there. So I know a lot about the city. I spend a lot of time in the city. And gotten to see the sort of emergence of the showboats on the sports scene there. Um, I was just curious, you know, I know you did a local, I saw a lot of local interviews recently. We're on some news stations and I've been kind of making the rounds in Memphis. So just kind of curious to know what it's like to get the opportunity to actually be in a local market this upcoming season and how you've kind of felt about the opportunity to be in Memphis specific, specifically. Look, that's a great question. And, and I'm, you know, we were very welcomed in Birmingham last year. Okay. Very. I mean, the, the, the people were awesome. The hotel was great. All that stuff was great. But at the same time, you kind of felt like you were the renters, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. You felt yeah. like you were renting the stadium, you know, from the Birmingham Stallions. And there's something to be said about being the Memphis Showboats and playing in Memphis. There's something about being, you know, the Birmingham Stallions and playing in Birmingham. It's your home. It's your fans. You can get out in the community. You can be a, a figure in the community. You can do those things, establish a fan base, make it a home field advantage for your team. So those are that's those are all the advantages. And, you know, we're just really fortunate that Memphis is in a football crazed state. It's in a football crazed city. And we're just really fortunate to be there. And, and you know, from making those rounds like you saw, you know, I think it was last week. Everything's been a whirlwind. But people want us there. I mean, they are excited about what's going on with this team. And, and uh, we're, I'm thrilled about that. We all are. Absolutely. And the uh, next question, I know, Zach, you had a question for John? Yes, I do. Coach Paul, uh, Coach uh, Filippo, glad to have you on the show. Uh, one thing that a lot of us uh, tuned into, you know, we following the special draft, the super draft, you know, we noticed you you very much filled up the entire board there, all 14 picks, uh, as many of the players between the two leagues as you were talking about as well. But it, it stuck out that you used all 14 of the rounds. How do you describe your draft strategy leading into your first year taking over for this Memphis squad? Zach, another good question. We guys came ready to roll tonight. I love it. Um, you know, I used like the end of that draft very much like a lot of times the sixth and seventh round in the NFL. Okay. Just okay. for my, and that's all I know. I'm, I'm not saying it's gr better or worse or whatever. That's, I was in that league for 15 years. So I know that. I know a lot of those guys that get picked in the seventh round, all right, are guys that are probably free agent grades, but you want them on your team and you don't want, the New England Patriots have a chance to go sign this guy. You don't want the Seattle Seahawks to have a chance to go sign this guy. So you draft him in the seventh round. We felt that way with the unlimited amount of moves we were able to make before February 14th, that if there was a player we wanted, okay, we wanted to go take him because we didn't want, okay, the San Antonio Brahmas to, to fight us for him or the Birmingham Stallions or, or you know, the Michigan Panthers. We wanted him on our team if we, if we drafted the young man. So that was our mantra going in was, hey, they're allowing us as many moves as we want before mid-February. If there's a player we want, let's just draft them. And then, you know, I'm not saying we're going to release that player, but that's an option. So if there's a player that we like, let's take him. And so um, that was our that was our, our mantra going in. Hmm. Appreciate the insight, Coach. Uh, I think Mel's had a question next. Oh, you're muted. Bells, you're muted. <laughs> hey. Trust me. I Tiny Panther, he's today. having a moment, so I had to mute so y'all didn't have to hear him. <laughs> but, uh, Coach, thank you for coming on and taking the time with us today. Um, I actually have two questions for you. So my first question is looking at the current rosters after um, the two drafts and then um, also the free agent signings we've had thus far. Which team are you looking forward to playing most to showcase the uh, the team you put together? Mel's, Mel's, you're killing me. You're trying to give me bolt board, bolt bolt and board materials before I even show up to training camp. 
know? yeah I mean, listen i'm just i'm curious i just want to see your insights to the other team <laughs> all right how about the birmingham stands they kicked our butt in the playoffs last year i think that's a good one that's one that i'd really like to see um i right. think that would be a really good game because they i got to give coach holtz and those guys a lot of credit they had a really good team they're really well coached they had good players uh, but unfortunately they they kicked our butt in the playoffs so we had two really good good games with them during the regular season and uh they had our number that night no most definitely most definitely i think the team that you put together i'm really excited to see it and i'm really excited to see what you guys do against the stallions this year um and then my second question is um as everyone knows i'm a huge swifty and what's your favorite <laughs> taylor swift song Whew. Uh, teardrops on my guitar. Oh, oh my gosh. That was, that was my song for the longest time. That was my first ringtone on my coach. On my I think you're song. her favorite coach of all time now after oh that, my gosh, after that are. answer. <laughs> Back when she sang country music, Mel's. Oh, those are some good albums. No, I, those I'm, are some I'm, good albums. Hey, I'm not against Taylor Swift. I think she's fantastic. I think she's an unbelievable, talented young woman. She's unbelievable singer she's an unbelievable dancer talented can play instruments can sing you know she's a, she's she's you know young girls love her i have a three-year-old daughter i mean that's a she's a fantastic role model for young girls you know so i just i think she's great but um i just, that's my favorite song back when she was singing country i absolutely love it thanks for thanks for talking with us of course mel's coach uh one of the questions that i feel like i have to ask is that you picked up Case Cookus in this dispersal draft. You know, that's a guy who's one of the top quarterbacks in the USFL the past couple of years. You know, what do you think he's going to bring to the team this season in the quarterback room? Oh, yeah. I mean, just experience. Playing, played, has played in the championship game, has played at a high level. You know, has proven a proven winner in our league, a proven quarterback in our league. Uh, did a lot of research on him before we took him. And uh, from a leadership standpoint, you know, uh, from a coachability standpoint, I talked to him a lot on the phone. Um, you know, during those pre-draft, if you want to call them meetings. Uh, so spent a lot of time with him and felt really comfortable with him, you know, and uh, felt really comfortable that, you know, he brings the three things we're looking for when you play the quarterback position, decision-making, timing, and accuracy. And he's shown he can do all those three things. And at the same time, you know, he's probably, his athleticism is probably a little bit, he doesn't get enough credit for that, you know. Um, he, you know, He's run for over 500 yards in two years in the USFL. And so I, I, want, I really wanted to make sure we had a, a guy or two, as you saw we signed later on, that were athletes that could still move in the pocket and, and make plays when they break down. Well, absolutely. And speaking of which, another quarterback you just picked up is Troy Williams. You know, that's a guy yeah. coming over from Pittsburgh, another guy that played in the championship this year. What does he bring to the room in, in Memphis? My thing is you can never have enough good quarterbacks, ever. There's, there's, there's not a number you can have that, of guys that can play that position. And we saw the amount of backup quarterbacks, number twos and number threes, and sometimes fours play on Sundays this fall. And you never want to get caught with your pants down and not having a guy ready to roll that can go win you football games. And so that was our goal was to sign. And that was the beauty of it. Troy just is a powerful runner. The <laughs> I'm standing with Matt White. We played the New Jersey Generals up in Canton, all right? We beat them, hard-fought game to go 4-0. and And I'm standing there with Matt White after our game in the end zone. And that's when Troy pulled that ball against the Birmingham Stallions and ran for like a 50-yard touchdown. And I was just like, wow. Like, did you see what just happened right there? And it was an unbelievably athletic play. And I kind of kept, from that play on, I kind of kept an eye on him you know, just to see what he was doing week to week, not studying him, just keeping an eye on him and uh, knowing that at some point our paths may cross and, and uh, not knowing the merger was going to happen. But you always keep your eye on people, I mean, especially when I was a quarterback coach. And we drafted Carson Wentz the next year. I still did quarterback evaluation because you're going to cross paths with these folks at some point, whether it be through you on the other team, free agency, whatever. Um, and you have to do your, do your homework. So, Troy was a guy I admired from afar for a long for a long time, and I'm glad he's on our football team. Appreciate the insight, Coach, and we really appreciate your time here. Now, I do have to ask, just because we're getting a ton of requests here in the chat, 
people are wondering when is this schedule coming out? When is the rule books going to come out? Is there any word on when we could possibly expect those things to come out? I know, of course, you might not be able to talk about it, so no worries. But is there any insight you can give us on that? I have no idea. I have <laughs> no idea. I, I, I wish I knew. And so, uh, you know, we're kind of in any any place, anytime, anywhere. That's one of the first things I told our team last year in New Orleans. We don't care who we play, when we play, or where we play. Just tell us when to show up and we'll be there. So that's kind of the mantra we'll take. Ref, I think you got one more question here for Flip or a couple. I got a couple questions for you. So first off, I know everybody impressed you with their line of questioning, so I apologize in advance. Uh, so the first one, you know, Todd Haley, he he's exited from the showboats. You're coming in to fill his spot. During his time, he created a little bit of a legacy for himself. Oh, Say that one more to answer. I'm sorry. Oh, I just yeah. switched up. <laughs> No, you're Sorry fine. You're that. fine. No, you're good. You're good. So you're, you're coming in to fill the, the role of Todd Haley as head coach for the showboats during his time. He built himself a little bit of a legacy. And I want to know if you're going to carry on some of his traditions. The big one that I think everybody wants to know about, are we going to see some victory twerking out on the field or maybe in the locker room after the game? Can you, can you comment on that? You know, I I'm not the biggest twerker in the world. Uh, you know, uh, I'll have to do some. I'll have to do some YouTube research on that. There you go. That one going. Well, I, I'm hoping to see it. We'll be watching all the games regardless. Um, but the the one other thing that I have to ask about, because again, kind of similar to James's other question, if we don't, people are going to have our heads for it. Uh, the internet kind of went wild last week when there was an interaction between you and a Mr. Ocho Cinco. Uh, I mean, what are the likelihoods that something like this is actually going to happen here? Uh, is, is that why you were late? I mean, maybe, I don't know. What can you tell us here? I don't know. Maybe. All right. <laughs> maybe. Well, John, we really appreciate your time coming on and joining us today. And you know, one thing I do want to point out too, is last year, you, know, you, you were dealing with some health issues, really pushed through all of that adversity. How are you feeling for this upcoming season with all that going on? James, I really appreciate I really appreciate you asking me that. That that means a lot. I know you you and I had a lot of positive interactions in our, in our press conferences last year, and and I really appreciate you asking. Uh, I'm doing a lot better. Uh, you know, this time last year I was in really rough shape, and uh, you know, doing a lot better this year. I'm walking. I'm walking without a limp. I start. I stopped walking with a limp probably late October, um, and so now I can. I'm getting around pretty good. Uh, you know, I'm lost a little bit of weight down more than my fight weight now, which is, I think you'll see a little s slimmer me on the sidelines, which will be good. Um, and so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll let your fans be the judge of that. If they think I'm slimmer or not, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I appreciate you asking. I'm doing a lot better. That's great to hear John. And of course, you know, I'll be out there with my camera, so I'll, I'll I might get some <laughs> pictures. We have to let, let the public make that decision there on that exactly. one. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. again, John, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate it and wish you all the best moving forward. 2024, it's going to be a big year. And again, thanks again. Thanks guys. Thanks for having me on anytime. Talk to you soon. Hey, coach. Thank thanks you. coach. What an excellent conversation. Glad to have uh, coach John Filippo on here and uh wonderful Questions from you guys out in out here for our PFN panel. Um, James, I will say, get, get the beauty shots. Make sure that it's fair to him on some of those some of those losses. And uh, if he's you know if he's going to be researching the tour, <laughs> hey, we be ready for the guys. This is catch it in four K week in and week out from around the UFL. I mean, we had TJ Barnes last time with a sword out and trying to attack Ducky and all sorts of stuff going on. This week we got John Filippo. He's talking about Taylor Swift. He's talking about twerking like Todd Haley. I mean, what's next? I'm like really excited for next week. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know what how about, we're going to keep topping this. What about later tonight when John Filippo is like at home on his computer and his wife walks in the room and he's just Googling <laughs> twerking tutorials? <laughs> I love it. So you I love it. your back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop there because we can't. <laughs> I could have asked him if he was going to start some sideline fights, but, you know, I felt twerking was probably the better direction. <laughs> Are you going to bring Todd? Oh, Hayes we're still live. Back to the... <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, we do have a new segment that we kind of teased earlier. Zach mm -hmm. Mel's. I think we got something coming up here. Well, I'm going to let Mel's just throw right into it. I, I don't mean to even take too much time, but uh, look, 
we have a great community in spring football. That's 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 just the simple truth to this. There's a lot of people. We say the crazies, but you know they're not all crazy. They're all crazy. They're passionate fans that love the game of football and love this side of football too. The underdog stories, the up and comers, you name it. And so Mel's, I'm giving her. We're giving her the leeway to do- join in. We're going to start doing a community segment on this show every week. Uh, Mel's, take it away. This is your this is your time to kick things off. What we got this week? Um, well, so we saw on Twitter, there was a Twitter user, um, Amar- Amara, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I'm really sorry if it's wrong, but um, she made a slideshow that we have, and it was made for a friend of hers to kind of explain the UFL to her. And I kind of liked it because it's cute and it definitely, you know, it's really girly. And that's one thing that I think being a spring football league, you know, it's hard to tap into that that female market space and so I thought it was just really cute that she made this for a friend and I just thought maybe y'all might want to take a look through it and uh see what she put together well I'm I'm especially excited because kind of like you said you know with spring football you're already kind of working against the the um the current if you will and so you're trying to bring in as many fans as you can and that the the female market not to say that fem- women don't watch football. We, you watch football. I mean, case in point, <laughs> but this helps kind of spread the word of what the UFL is to a market that let's be honest, probably isn't looking for it. Well, and I mean, you look at like the NFL with Taylor Swift right now, you know, I mean, a huge market of women that never would have watched football, you know, Sundays are for the boys, their husbands sit down on the couch and they, you know, make them their spin dip or buffalo chicken dip and bring them beers and whatever. But they're not here for that. But, you know, Taylor Swift dating Travis Kelsey, you know, for a few games, they had like a little camera up in the screen where these girls could sit and watch what Taylor Swift was doing with their husbands and boyfriends. So, you know, I just think that there's things you could do to definitely try to market to to the that female market that's not necessarily as vested into football as some as as much as we are you know with that technical knowledge and you know players and that sort of thing so i thought it was really cute you know she kind of just went through and she explains like what is the ufl what is spring football you know there's like the whole the rule section which i thought she actually did a really good job on the rule section Mm -hmm. um explaining the differences between the xfl and the usfl's rules um, I know we don't have the rule book yet to know exactly what's going to happen, but I thought it was like a really cute, simplistic way of explaining what can be kind of kind of confusing or daunting for people who just don't watch football. Um, and then she did have her team section. And I have to say, um, I absolutely love this. And I think it's so cute. But I think there's a hint of bias in um, her teams and how she <laughs> described them. And I thought some were a little, were kind of funny. Um, particularly San Antonio. So it was very short. <laughs> she didn't have a lot to say, except they so, had some good moments. So I haven't Last gone year through they this did yet. suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious to see, because I haven't had a chance to go through this yet, but I hope that she got the memo on the Houston Roughneck slide. We're going uh, 12 and 0. Is that in there? Hold on, uh, let's see. I don't, I don't think that was there. The best team in the XFL South. I'll take, she got her facts there seven and three gamblers are five and five you know we we, we would have hoped some more I, best I, teams in the up yeah, based in houston all the facts are there it's just so if you're listening just add another bullet point 12 and 0 in 2024 rough them up <laughs> any other critiques <laughs> so, well you know something hey, I hey, ufl community out. spotlight and here's how you fix it, <laughs> fix it yeah <laughs> something i wanted to point out that you know mel's was talking about which i think is really important is you know like as we want to see spring football continue to grow, and it would be great to see more women get involved, more women get invested. And there are a ton of women who are invested, whether it's on the sidelines, whether it's the social media people, a lot of amazing women doing a lot of great work for spring football. But now that we know that John D. Filippo is a Swifty at heart, maybe we will see her show up to a game. I mean, I got to give My a shout out to Madison Jagger. She's done a lot of great work with the USFL the last couple of years. We'll continue that this year. And, you know, she tweeted out yesterday, hey, maybe, maybe we will see Taylor Swift at a game. You never know. You never know. You just got to put that out there. Right. Maybe, maybe depending on um, flips to working skills, we'll have to see what he puts out on the field. I do we, have to give a shout out to, I don't know if uh, you all have interacted with her on, on social media or other, you know, uh, platforms, but 
Uh, she goes by Brahma Babe. I don't know her actual name, but she goes by Brahma Babe, and she is a hardcore San Antonio fan. I was on a different show being interviewed on the Alternative Football Network, and uh, she came on and asked a question and asked, you know, what my opinion was of female fandom of the USFL, because that's really one of her missions is was growing female fans in the XFL. And she really wants to make that a part of the UFL. And so um, I think that is, you know, obviously having a female being one of the you know sort of chief executives, owners of your league with Danny Garcia is a really awesome, unique thing. And um, I'm hoping that that kind of, you know, sets a trajectory for this league moving forward of just sort of being inclusive in that way and inviting women in to say, hey, if you if you're interested in football, but you feel like the NFL or college or whatever is overwhelming, there's all these teams, there's all these players, there's all these hardcore fans. Here's a good space to kind of dip your toes in the water. The Brahma and I do have to say is, uh, definitely a, definitely present. I, I, I was I'm glad you brought that up, Luke, is all I can say, because that's uh her, R.C. Woods, there's a few others in that group that they share fa alternative fandom across indoor and the US XFL scene. They're great people. Mel's, go ahead. I apologize for the interruption. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, I my experience with the spring football community as a whole, I think everyone is very welcoming. I mean, it's a small community and everyone just really wants to see it succeed. Like everyone here has the exact same goal. And so even as like a woman coming in to a pretty male dominated space, like it doesn't matter. Like we're all just, we all, oh my gosh, the cats are going crazy. We're all just <laughs> yes. one community coming together and, you know, just to push spring football, especially these guys, you know, people have dubbed it the second chance league. We've had a number of guys from both the UFL, the USFL, the XFL that have gone back and they've made it in the NFL. You know, so I think it, any women who want to get involved or join, it's just it is a really well, welcoming space for everybody. Yeah. Hey, we do have a bit of breaking news um, that Ooh. I do want to point out. UFL PR just dropped some more stuff. Um, most of them are players that we already knew were going to be on their respective teams. And a lot of guys that now are just signing their letters of intent, mainly on the XFL side, just to come back. A couple of notables is... A couple of players that were waived. One is Houston's guard, Paul Adams. Uh, that's a guy that was picked up in the dispersal draft. He was really solid for the New Orleans Breakers the last couple of seasons. There were rumors of him retiring, um, and now he has been waived. So that is a potential thing there. He might have retired. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get some more clarity on that. Jake, do you have any comments on Carson Strong being on this list as a wave player? Because he wasn't protected. Uh, what's the deal with that? You got any inside info? It might have been one of those weird contract things, like either they had uh, you know specific contracts with some players, but otherwise, yeah, no, I'm confused. We didn't protect him, didn't pick him up in any of the drafts, so he, as far as I had, not on the roster. So uh, definitely was surprising seeing him pop up on there. Yeah, he's a pretty yeah, deep I think he's... TV field right now in Michigan. True, true. Uh, Pat Rufino, shout out Pat. You know he pointed out to me which you all may have already known this but i think he's coaching at nevada now and i think yeah. he's maybe moved on from from playing but yeah kind of odd that you know i guess they just wanted to make sure in case anybody's wondering <laughs> he ain't sticking around well yeah, and sure another sure. another signing there is elijah hamilton he is now in arlington that's a defensive back that was with the uh, battle hawks last year uh, he had some CFL interest, and now he's back in the XFL. Or, excuse me, not the XFL, the UFL. Man, I, got, I still <laughs> got to get used to this, man. Granted, he's still in the XFL conference, guys, so can't give me too much crap for that one. But he's back. And, yeah, most of these other names are just guys that were already picked up, from what I can tell. Yeah, the uh, – the uh, what do they call them? I, I always correct you, Zach. Now I can't. Oh, the letter of interest. Yeah, the letter of interest. Letter of uh, intent. Intent. Yeah. intent <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever. I mean, that yeah, that makes it a little bit more confusing because we see on, like, the USFL side, it's it's kind of completely different. As things are happening, they're happening, right? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, still, still a little bit of runway to go, and, I mean, there's plenty of talent out there, so – as if things don't work out, like we were talking about last week with, uh, geez, I'm going to get his name wrong, Robert uh, Nadici. Uh, I'll probably get butcher that, but you get my point. Is uh, MDG. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as things don't work out, there's plenty of guys to fill out those spots. So um, 
it'll be interesting. Less than 30 days to kick off or kick off till training camp. God, I wish it was less than 30 (laughs) days to kick off. Less than 30 days till training camp. Things are moving fast and furious. We got flip on the show. No curtains. There was a second there where I was like, "Uh uh-oh, we might have to just adjust on the fly. And right as I was about to adjust, he showed up. You know, hopefully there was some big business happening. He he alluded to it. There's a development there. We'll have to wait and see for that news to drop. Yep. We can only massive, hope. Massive deal. Plenty of teases. Plenty of things moving behind the scenes. It is uh, fast approaching towards training camp, especially towards kickoff uh, right around the horizon. Um, anything else, guys, that we have that maybe we did not miss? I, uh, I my, my main thing I was about to ask for this show concludes is how am I, am I in charge of points because I'm sitting in oh, yeah, this, yeah. this week? <laughs> Are you going to give yeah. yourself a point? I, I only if people allow me. I'm not going to be like that. Um, I was going to say you did a I, great job hosting. I think you get a point for today. You know, I do too. You know, I agree. You know, there you go. behind the curtain because we like to do it. Um, I have fun with these sunglasses, but uh, I can't see certain things when we try and organize. So you know, <laughs> I, for Ducky holding on and uh, embracing my quick times i appreciate him doing so behind the curtain um i will award some points obvi- obviously i give two points over to luke everyone gets a point by the way for good que- for solid questions who did ask que- questions to filippo uh points two points in particular go to uh jake ball here for coverage on the panthers and giving insight as well two points to luke miller one's for the question to filippo one is for bringing up the brahma mamas and brahma babe <laughs> and giving the community in- engagement so shout out there uh mel's gets three community segment plus also questions for Fil- the filippo in here uh and giving insight for the Detroit fan fan engagement, at least for the Lions, trying to ask and answer some things that maybe are questions I uh, put on the spot for an emotional night. Uh, two points to the ref, of course, one for questions in the show, and uh, a bonus for the twerking portion because it just adds an extra <laughs> point for laughs. Uh, <laughs> finally, for James, uh, I'm just gonna get I'm just gonna give him two two right off the bat. Honestly, I'm gonna give him three because he had the most questions out of all for Flip, and definitely. Has has been giving us a ton of cred on getting signings caught up as well, especially with the UFO PR. That wraps things up. We haven't, I don't have the tally in front of me, but uh, as follows, everyone has two, James has three. I did not award myself anything unless you guys want to give me one, but I am not going to do that. Zach, I say you get an extra one for just being a great dude all around. Um, and then I think we also have to give Coach Flip at least 50. I think he has to jump Tiny Panther. Ooh, okay. Oh, so he needs that. 51 then. That. We need to, the tally we're going to have to post, <laughs> rankings are going to have to be posted on social. We'll be working on that at some point. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I got it right here. I got it right here. So let's just run through it. So right now we have a tie, well, a tie for third at this point. So we have Coach Flip in first place at 51 points, Tiny Panther at 50 points, uh, Luke and James, you're both tied for third with five points. Then there is, then everybody else is tied at three. Okay. And one of the, we will get a graphic for this, but right now, just if anybody wants to see, this is what nice. we're, we're working with. I'm still trying to figure out notebooks. what the point system is for. Like, is this I, our, what is it for? Uh, I, it's, it's in very, actually, you, I'm glad you asked. It's, it's very important. This, this point system is going to determine something very, very important ah. at the end of the season. So Summer we'll have to figure to that out I mean, for it. Yeah, t- it, with more details in the coming weeks. Sounds Just good. like Spring Stock 3. I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of check. many things you have to stay tuned if you want to find out. If you want to find out if you can get a date with Mel's, if you want to find out who gets to do something <laughs> special with the points, you got to keep coming back. <laughs> Oh man! Only, uh, only on around the UFL can you find this kind of content. <laughs> and, and I, I think on that note, <laughs> yeah, that is the perfect way to get on the off ramp for for every <laughs> for, for everybody here. I appreciate appreciate it, appreciate it guys. I do have um, one shout yeah. out I want to give because I meant to do it two weeks ago and I forgot last mm-hmm. week again too. I just want to give a shout out to Thorn at P- PFN. He does an amazing job. Uh, with roster work yes um if you i think his twitter handle is thorn pfn at thorn pfn Mm -hmm. everybody should go take a look at that i mean seriously he's redone it so i mean it it, 
I didn't think it could be better than it already was. But now, like, each player has a bio, like, a detailed bio when you hover over them. I mean, it's just, it's amazing what he's done. So everybody really should go check it out. And kudos to him for putting that together. It really is amazing. Another Sign him up. Member. Another fantastic member of the PFN group group that we have that we're building. The number one leader in spring football and football news, if you will, out and about. Well, that's unless anyone else has anything else they'd like to provide. I'm giving one more chance. I don't want to step on toes. Going once. I think I'm good. Going twice. Sold as we exit the show. Everybody, have a great time. We are going to catch you next Monday. Hey every Monday here right now, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific time on the PF Newsroom channel. Catch us Mondays. Catch the UFL podcast on Fridays. Follow us on social at Around the UFL on your favorite platform. And catch us for all exciting news coverage and such on ProFootballNewsroom.com or UFLNewsroom.com to find all things UFL. I'm Zach Common hosting this week. Kick off the outro. We'll see you next Monday.